Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel many times before. I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the years, a few different styles, but I would say this brewery are definitely best known for their different New England hazy, whatever you want to call them, IPAs, and also for their modern, Nordic, smoothie, fruity, juicy whatever you want to call them, sour beers. If those are two style categories that catch your interest, then this is one of the Swedish breweries that you need to check out at the moment. But the one that we're going to have a look at today is one of their latest releases through Sistembolaget here in Sweden. It's a style that I know these guys can do very well, and it does seem to be a very highly rated beer as well, actually. So needless to say, I'm very curious to see what this one has in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So uh, yeah, for this review then, we are going to head up towards Gothenburg once again. Jutebori, as you would say in Swedish, the Swedish craft beer capital up there on the West Coast. Got to get that Gothenburg catchphrase in when we're reviewing Gothenburg beers because it is just channel tradition these days. And for this review then, we are going to return to the wonderful Fermenterna, or the Fermenters, as it would be in English. So this particular beer is called Double Maracas. It comes in at 8% ABV, and this one is a New England hazy, whatever you want to call it, Imperial Double IPA. So uh, yeah, very much looking forward to this. Let's crack on and see what we have. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fermenterra and before, and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. But there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support you give is massively, massively appreciated. You can go into the homepage and search for things based on geography. The whole channel has that geography-based tagging system, of course, and you can check out the playlist of beers from different countries too. You'll find this one in the Swedish playlist along with many other things. So yeah, let's crack on and have a wee chat about Fermenterna then. So Fermenterna, as I've told you before, was founded by Niklas Aronson and Anna Kleissen, who founded the company together back in 2018. So the brewery was originally based in Strömstad in Västerjutland, a bit to the north of Gothenburg and actually very close to the Norwegian border, a very picturesque little fishing town from what I understand, it's somewhere that I do want to go and visit. But um, Nicholas's journey with beer started off when he went into a beer bar one day and ordered something without really knowing what it was. And this turned out to be the um, the Tropic Thunder from Dugis Bregery. And that for me is one of the kind of cult classic Swedish sour beers. It was a collaboration with uh, Stillwater Artisanal from the US of course, but this really showed him that beer could be a lot more interesting than just fizzy yellow stuff. Uh, Anna, on the other hand, had a long history with things that ferment. She used to make sourdough bread, uh, you know, you name it, she played with it and fermented it. But she used to run the restaurant Costa's Trade Yordor in Strömstad as well. But the brewery started out with a very small 200 litre brew kit and tanks. And then in late 2018, they took a break to expand the company after their beers had been received very, very well at some festivals that they'd attended. They then had a new facility with two 500 litre brew kits and a total tank capacity of 17,000 litres and over the course of 2019 they were aiming to brew 50,000 litres but at this time they said they had the equipment to brew around 250,000 litres of beer per year. Over the next couple of years they continued to you know put out New England IPAs and sour beers and things like this like I say those are the two styles that this brewery seems to focus on and they had great success with it. Fast forward to August of 2021 they moved to a new brewery in Hisingen down in Gothenburg taking their equipment with them but also investing in a new 3,000 litre brew kit. That arrived a little bit later in the year, of course, and they do plan to set up a tap room and restaurant at some point in the near future as well. Um, according to Untapped, these guys have produced around 150 different kinds of beer as of October 2022. And yeah, like we said earlier, these guys, if you like your kind of Berliner Weisse, Goza type sour beers, the modern ones, the smoothie type sours, then this is one of the breweries for you as it is if you enjoy your New England hazy IPAs. So uh, yeah, I always keep an eye on what these guys are releasing and it's nice to try the new beers from them. But yeah, that is all I can really tell you about Fermenterna for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, as always, check out the brewery website, follow them on their social media. You can check out the untapped page to learn a little bit more about the different beers that they've done 
or you can check out some of my older reviews. But um, yeah, let's crack on and have a wee look at the beer itself. So I'll just let you have a wee look at the artwork on this before we open up. As you can see, it's pretty typical of what we've come to expect from Fermenterina in the past. It does look pretty nice. They've always got these kind of minimalist white cans. Gold top, as usual as well. You can see on the side here, double maracas, and there is the Fermenterina. Uh, symbol with this one there, the old fermenting bottle. But yeah, this beer I believe cost me, uh, it's either 50 or 55 Swedish krona, we'll go with 55 to be safe because it's a double as well. But yeah, I'm pretty sure this cost me about 55 kroners, uh, so that is uh, 5 euros 50, about 5 pounds sterling, somewhere in the region of 6 dollars American if the exchange rates are about the same. But uh, yeah, released as part of October 2022's uh, look out was mostly like the sortiment through Sistembolaga and it was released a wee bit earlier on Glass Banking as well. But um, yeah, let's crack this guy open and see what we have. An 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. Uh, the hops in this one, incidentally, are Citra, Mosaic, uh, Sabro and Victoria's Secret. The Citra is in Cryo and T90 pellet form. The Sabro is T90 pellets and then uh, Mosaic is Cryo and I'm guessing Victoria's Secret is in the, the pellets as well. But the T90, of course, I believe is a specific class of pellets. I think it's to do, you know, the T90, of course, is to do with the purity. The pellets um, are basically the good part of the hop flower. So I think it's something along the lines of, you know, they contain 90% of the useful part of the hops, if you like. So, um, yeah, there we go. But anyway, we have the beer out. We can have a look at this now. So, as you can see, and as you would expect, this one looks very, very nice. So before the head disappears in this beer, we can see that it's poured with about a two-third finger, I would say, of a frothy, um, kind of cream-coloured head. I don't know if I would go as far as saying that one is perfect white. To me, it looks a little bit more like a kind of creamy colour. But what we can certainly say about this beer is that it's actually, it's a good bit darker and a good bit more amber than I remember seeing from Fermenterina in a good wee while. I'll need to have a look at some of the, the other reviews quickly and just um, see about that. But this beer strikes me as being a good little bit more amber than we've seen from Fermenterina before, because usually their beers are very bright yellow colours. So yeah, maybe using a slightly different malt base in this one. But remember, the colour of your beer depends on the type of... Uh, Malts that you use, this goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil will also play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any barrel agent that you do or any adjuncts that you put in will affect the colour of your beer as well, but when it comes to any type of IPA, for the most part, other than fruit IPAs, you don't often have to care about that. But um, yeah, level of haze in this one for an 8%er. It is kind of what you would expect. It does have a good little bit of opacity to it, but of course, um, when it comes to um, these New England IPAs, the level of opacities and, or haziness, as we should say, is determined by the oak content, wheat content, and to a degree, the yeast that you use too. But certainly not the soupiest and gloopiest of New Englands that we've ever seen. But, and uh, like I said, it is a wee bit darker than we've seen from Fermenterina in the past. So that is quite interesting. I'm curious to see what this is going to have in store for us. I think this one might have a bit more of a sweet side to it but we'll see uh yeah i don't think we need to say anything else about the appearance of this one other than there, there's one or two big bubbles um sticking to the bottom of the glass and a few small ones just going up toward the bottom of the head which incidentally has just faded away to be a nice kind of thinner foamy layer but um yeah let's crack on with this one then and see what we have here aroma should be interesting oh yeah this is very very nice this one um, actually, first impression of it is that it's quite, um, it is a little bit more malty leaning and a bit sweeter. And it's also got a good little bit of an orange component to it as well, which isn't really a surprise. I mean, uh, just to go through the hops briefly, I mean, uh, all of them are American except uh, the Victoria's Secret. Uh, the American ones come in about 14% alpha acid. The Victoria's Secret is about 12% alpha acid. Citra's going to give you a good kind of mangoey juicy note with a little bit of lemon and lime in a New England IPA. The Mosaic is going to give you a big tangerine orange. The Sabro is going to give you the same, maybe a little touch of pineapple and also a wee bit of um, you know, a kind of coconut backbone to it. Victoria's Secret will give you a good bright passion fruit, good bit of mango and also some pineapple too. Um, so yeah, these are the kind of fruits you can expect in this beer based on the hops, but we'll see what is a little bit more kind of dominant in this one. For me, it does have a good little bit of orangey character, but that is backed up with significant um, kind of 
it is backed up with significant tropical notes as well. And you can smell the wee bit of coconut too from the Sabro. Um, but yeah, like I say, this one strikes me as being a bit more oily and sweet uh, just from the aroma compared to what we've had from Fermenterona in the past. And as I've always said, there are six ways a New England IPA can lean for me. They can be a bit more farmhousey and yeasty. They can be riley and grainy. And those two elements are a bit more common in uh, American brewed West uh, New England IPAs. Sorry. Uh, they can also be wheaty and bitey, oaty, creamy, barley malt bready, or they can be a little bit sweet. And quite often they will show you a good few of those characteristics. But for me, this one certainly seems to lead, lean toward the kind of sweeter side of the spectrum actually so um yeah aroma wise this beer is pretty interesting just mainly for the fact that it's um different from what we've had from this brewery in the past and we know that these guys can do very good beers um yeah so let's break this down uh backbone of this beer you absolutely do get a little bit of a fresh white bread bread crust some white bread in there some nice kind of brown bready characters as well and um, you've also, you know, the bread in this beer does to me smell a little bit more dense, actually. So you could, the bread crusty notes, and they back up the kind of sweeter side of this beer too. But you can certainly smell the wheat kind of smoothing out the beer and just thickening everything up as it normally does. There's a little touch of wheaty bitiness in the back of the nose. But it's not, it's, it's kind of muted a little bit by the overall sweetness of this beer. But yeah. White bread, bread crust, white bread, brown bread, good bit of wheatiness. And then, um, yeah, you also have that, um, you also have a good little bit of sweetness uh, sitting on top there. I don't, it's interesting for me because you get a little bit of oaty creaminess out of this beer. But that, again, is kind of muted a little bit by the sweeter side of this. For me, there is actually a kind of straight up caramel in the nose with this beer, which is a little bit unusual with New England's actually, because normally it will give you some kind of butter candy, butterscotchy type element. But this one definitely has a bit of straight up caramel, which um, I do like. Um, so yeah, straight up oily sweet caramel in there. There is a little bit of that butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing underneath it, definitely. And you're also getting a little bit of a more kind of um, McVitie's digestive biscuity kind of vibe to the beer as well, which again, I like very much. Um, yeah, aroma wise, I have to say this is pretty damn nice. Um, certainly right up my street. I like the big kind of uh, sweeter uh, beers, as you know, this, you know, it's the Scottish sweet tooth with the Scotch ales and stuff like that. The Doppel box. These are, you know, my favorite styles of beer. Belgian quadruples as well. But yeah, this is going to be quite interesting. Uh, green component wise, this one is kind of what you would expect from the New England style. Uh, as I've told you many a time, there are three types of hopping. Early edition hopping gives you mainly bitterness within the first hour of the warp boil. Late edition hopping within the last half hour of the warp boil usually, that gives you a little bit of bitterness but mainly flavour and aroma. Dry hopping after the warp boil is complete is uh, you know all about flavour and aroma. New England IPAs rely on the latter two, West Coast IPAs use all three, and that's why West Coast IPAs are, generally speaking, more bitter than their New England counter counterparts. But yeah, for me, the, the thing that you can use to tell is the fact that in the New Englands, the rather than being very deep and dank, quite often the New England green component is actually quite bright and often wet. Um, so with this beer, you certainly get a little tiny bit of earthiness in the back of the nose. It's the mosaic, I think, that's going to give you that. Because it usually is. Um, moving further forward, there is a little bit of floral character there, but it's actually, the, the green component of this beer, for me, really is more, it, it's got a very wet, grassy, floral type thing to it, which again, I very much enjoy. Um, yeah, the green component for me, wet, Freshly cut grass, a little bit of, um, as I say, floral aromaticity in there. It just goes together very, very nicely, actually. So it gets a thumbs up from uh, from me, for sure. Very, very nice smelling beer. Um, yeah, on the... Yeah, on the uh, fruity side of things, then. I think we've said everything we need about the green component. Fruity side of things, for me, as I said earlier, it really has a big 
oily orangey component to it and that's that's just the both of these hops usually give you a kind of mosaic will give you a tangerine whereas i found sabro gives you a bit more of a kind of mandarin -y note actually um but both of them combined they give you this big big oily orangey character that's almost more akin to uh to amarillo which was one of my favorite hops back in the day amarillo always had this big oily zesty orange that's the fruit that jumps out of this beer for me um, but behind that you are getting other things um, there's a teeny little bit of uh, a sort of lemon the limino, which I'm guessing will be the citra. But yeah, you are getting elements of like an oily mango as well. A wee bit of apricot underneath. But um, yeah, the aroma of this beer, I think, is... Um, the aroma of this beer is very, very nice. And like I say, just very big and very oily. So it gets a big, big thumbs up from me. Um, yeah. I think this is pretty awesome. So, yeah, love it. Uh, as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy the aroma of your beers before you get stuck into them. That's always half the experience with craft beer and whiskey and sake and things like that. But I think it is about time that we get stuck into this one. So, yeah, this is the Double Maracas, an 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA, from Fermenterna in Gothenburg. Definitely a bit darker looking than the ones we've had before. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, cheers. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say straight away, it's kind of funny this, because this is almost exactly as I thought it was going to be. What I was talking about with the aroma and what we deduced from the appearance um, this beer is pretty much like that and you know I, I could just kind of you know you just get a feeling sometimes that you're going to enjoy a beer and this one has kind of just delivered on what I thought it was going to so um, yeah this is good so once again thumbs up to Fermenterna wouldn't expect any less of them but it is cool to see them do something that's a bit different from what we've had um, from them in the past actually because interestingly for me usually their New Englands are a bit more kind of they've usually got a little bit of farmhousey character to them they've usually got a little bit of zip and they kind of lean toward a more um they lean toward a more kind of tropical and kind of zesty citrus whereas this one's a little bit more kind of oily and sweet so it really is kind of for me this is fermentera and i'm showing you a different side of what they they can do actually so i like this you know i would love to see these guys do like a proper you know 70 80 ibu west coast ip i'd love to see them have a go at that they haven't done it yet but fingers crossed that's something they do look at in the future because you know having taken the sort of malt base the, the kind of sweetness that this beer has and the orangey character that would make a really nice west coast ipa as well actually but anyway let's focus on this beer so yeah definitely a kind of more oily but still smooth and creamy at the same time Definitely a more oily and sweet uh, New England IP this, and very orangey leaning, absolutely. Green component is certainly what I expected too. So let's just go through this beer and kind of break it down and explain it as we always usually do. So, backbone of this beer, you've got a lovely little bit of a kind of fresh white bready bread crust, as you always get with these beers, that's forming the backbone of the beer. You'll get a little bit of dryness out of that the further you go into the palate. So on top of that, for me, you get a little bit of a kind of wholemeal bready character. This beer does have a wee bit of a kind of grainy element to it. And in fairness, it wouldn't, for me, it wouldn't feel like a fermenter on a beer if it didn't have just that little tiny touch of brown bread. So then on top of that layer, you get the, the white bread and you can feel the barley malt layer and then the wheat layer on top of that, that more dense wheaty bread. Uh, sitting in there as well. These are all things that we would expect of um, of Fermentera. Now, of course, we've seen this with their beers many times before. What I will say too is that the, the wheat does actually develop a little bit of zippiness the further you go into the aftertaste, but we'll, it's mainly on the back third of the palate, but we'll come back to that a wee bit later. But yeah, on top of the dense kind of wheaty layer, um, you can feel a few other things going on. Um, so you've got a little bit of, you've got a wee bit of an interesting interaction in this beer between the oaty creaminess and the, the kind of malty sweetness that this beer has. So, 
So, um, yeah, this beer for me, I think is um, is the the malty side of this is just really nice. I like. I do like a little bit of brown sugar from some of these New England IPAs, and that just goes back to how I used to like the West Coast IPAs. But yeah, on top of that kind of dense, sweetie layer, you can feel a bit of the oaty creaminess in there. And again, the oats are really quite thick in this beer. Um, if you go down the middle line of your tongue, you can feel the bit of creaminess is just sitting there. And as you push out toward the edge of the middle third of your palate, you get a little bit of dryness from the oats. The thing is with this one, because it has that kind of more brown sugary sweetness to it it's a bit harder to tell how old exactly this um new england ip is and in fairness because it has that bit of brown sugary sweetness it'll probably hold up a wee bit longer i would say um so yeah in top on top of the the middle you've almost got like a circle in the middle of your palate in the middle third of your palate in the dead in the epicenter the dead center of that circle you get a bit of a straight up caramel and as you move further out as you move further out from that centre, you start to get a little bit of the kind of Werther's original note. You also get a little bit of um, you also get a little bit of a kind of McVitie's digestive biscuity type quality as well. So yeah, I do quite like how all of that pieces together. So yeah, nice big oily sweet, nice oily sweetness in the middle of the. The palettes we say that you move further out from that it's a wee bit um yeah as i say it is a wee bit more kind of um like butter candy butterscotchy sort of thing and then on the edge of the that middle as you move out toward the edge of that kind of sweet circle that i'm talking about there's a wee bit of biscuit and there's probably a bit of golden promise in this beer i would say that that's probably one of the things that's in there but i'd be very curious to know what malt base uh, they've used in this but like i say this is a lot sweeter than we've had from Fermentera now in the past. Not complaining because I do like it, of course. Um, but yeah, I think that covers the middle third of the palate in this beer quite well. So the border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build-up in the beer and it's more of a kind of white bready uh, character there. But the base of the back, uh, yeah, the base of the back third of the palate in this beer is the kind of same. You've got that white bready bread crust, but of course it is a little bit drier. And then on top of that, you get the more, um, on top of that, you do get the brown bready layer, which is a little bit taller and a little bit more airy in a sense. Then you get the white bready layer, but then, yeah, you get dense wheat again. And it, again, on the back third of the palate, as I say, the wheat shows you a little bit more of a kind of bitiness, which I, I do quite like as well. Above that, you get the more yeasty character coming out of the beer. And um, yeah, it's interesting in this beer, actually. Yeah, above um above the above that you do start to get the um above all of that you start to get the the kind of more airy yeasty characters uh coming out of the beer. So you've got a lovely little bit of a kind of very light white farmhouse bread. There's a wee touch of woodiness in there, but it's also got just that little bit of almost honeycomb flavour. So you'll get that on top of the back third of the palate. So as I always say, the back third of your tongue the flavor is always taller there and as you come further forward into the middle third of your palate it just squashes um the flavor just condenses down and squashes together but um yeah i do like how that um how that goes together um yeah i think we've covered the malty side of this beer quite well to be honest with you on to the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate nice little bit of earthiness in there as you move further forward it does quite quickly become you know, pretty green and pretty... Uh, actually, this beer actually does have a wee bit of dankness to it, in fairness. So that's kind of interesting. You are getting quite a, a base of a little spicy floral character coming out of this beer. And that goes all the way forward on the sides of your tongue. There's a little bit of a more oily uh, character in there as well, which is nice. And then, yeah, around the front curve of the palate, the beer does have a little bit of a more kind of um, oily grassiness to it. So, um, yeah, as I say, I very much like how that goes together. So, um, yeah, it is very, very nice, this one, for sure. Um, yeah, gets a thumbs up from me, absolutely. 
Um, so we'll go on to the fruity side of things. I'm just surprised, you know, you, the further you go in the aftertaste with this beer, it actually does show you a wee bit more bitterness, um, which is interesting too. So um, let's look at that front third of the palate then. The border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a little bit of a bready build up there, which is nice. The base of the front third of your palate is, um, the base of the front third of your palate has a wee bit of bread crust underneath, some brown bread on top, then a little bit more dense white bread. And of course, above that, you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer. And like I said earlier, the fruity character of this one is very orangey leaning, but will work from back forward. Um, so yeah, let's look at that. So yeah, at the back of that front third of your palate, there maybe is a wee teeny hint of passion fruit in there. But as you come further forward, it absolutely, the back half of that front third of your palate is about this very oily, juicy mango, of course. Um, as you reach the midpoint, you start to get a little bit more of a pineapple note, and that kind of creeps over the front half of the palate as well, or the front half of that front third of your tongue, sorry, but the front half, uh, the front sixth of your tongue, the front half of the front third of your palate, whatever you want to call it, um, that really has this big oily character, and it's the oranges, it's, it's you know, it's the sabro and it's the mosaic really that are mixing in together in there, and underneath that you do get a little bit of that kind of coconutty quality from the uh, from the sabro, and I think the orange really starts to dominate the flavour of this beer, uh, the further you go into the aftertaste. And as I say, Sabro usually gives you this kind of mandarin note, the, 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 the mosaic gives you a bit more of a kind of tangerine sort of thing. And um, it has uh, very much, it has a lot more of a, a kind of Amarillo type vibe to it, which is interesting. I would love to, you know, it'd be interesting for them to use this recipe again, but use Amarillo actually. Um, but flavour wise this is very nice this is right up my street a bit sweeter and brown sugary and also a bit orangey i love ipas that lean this way and this one just kind of has hit the mark for me i've always been very impressed with what fermentera can do but this one is one of these ones that just kind of hits the spot for me so thumbs up to them for for that actually so um yeah i think we can leave it at that for the flavour of this beer like i said very you know um, simply put, you know, oily and sweet uh, and orangey leaning New England IPA, this one. Definitely more malty than other things we've seen from Fermentern in the past. But on the basis of this, we'd love to see a West Coast from them, a proper old school West Coast. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, so uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then, this is definitely a kind of more full-bodied beer. Uh, carbonation is very smooth. It's a very oily leaning one, this, but it does show you an element of the kind of New England creaminess and smoothness underneath. That's not really in question. IBU wise, I want to say that this beer is maybe about, I, I think it's a bit, it feels like it's a bit more than 40. Um, I This could be 50 IBUs. It could be a little bit more than that. You get a wee bit of bitterness out of this beer later on. Um, IBU counts are always my weakest point of beer reviewing, so you need to keep this in mind. Uh, but yeah, I think this is at least 50 IBUs. Um, malt base as we said very smooth gives you a wee touch of dryness later on but quite an oily malt base and sweet malt base compared to other fermenterina New England's that we've had um, and then yeah the fruity character this one mix of tropical and big oily orange flavours so um, yeah I really like how this one goes together uh, I think we can leave it at that for this beer so this one is the double maracas an 8% New England hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it IP from fermenterina definitely more orangey and more kind of oily and sweet leaning compared to some of their other efforts, but right up my street. Very, very nice. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Maybe this one would actually beat the original one they did with the uh, the hot flower on it in terms of my favourite ones I've had. And I don't take that statement lightly because you always get a solid New England from uh, from Fermenterina. But uh, yeah, that beer, the one with the hot, that just has the simple hot flower, and I think it was just called IPA, that one has a significant nostalgia factor to it, which is always the thing. One of the first ones I've tried from these guys. Um, but yeah, lovely, lovely uh, beer, this one, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. So hopefully a West Coast from these guys at some point soon. 
just uh, based on this. But once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Fermenterina as well. And we will see about returning to these guys very, very soon. Till the next time, slange it, Scott. Cheers. Check out my social media, check out theirs, and try some of the Fermenterina beers. Double Maracas, New England, Hazy Imperial Double IPA. Cheers.